In this lesson, we're going to be talking about skies, clouds, sunset, daytime, some different conditions in clouds and uh, the sky. And the key to painting sky and clouds is just like everything else, it's simplifying. If I can reduce what I see that's more complicated, and the sky can look pretty complicated, reduce it to simple shapes, again, simple shapes, values, and warm and cool color. It's going to work a lot better. I think too often with photographs we get caught up, and I'm speaking from experience, caught up in all the detail in the clouds, especially if there's a lot of clouds, a little dark sunlights. But reducing everything to bigger, simpler shapes, just one, maybe two values for each shape makes it a lot easier. This is a painting by John Francis Murphy. If you want to Google his name and see his work, he was a, a tonalist. 19th century. His palette was more earth colors, a lot of sunsets, late evenings. You can see in the sky here it's reduced to just two values, pretty much, and two shapes. The shape of the yellow sky and then the shape of the darker, cooler clouds. And it's that shape that composes the sky. It sets up the pattern of dark clouds against light sky, and then dealing with the edges afterwards. We see the soft edges and we think there's some technique, but for three quarters of the painting, if not longer, it's just these big, simple, abstract shapes, the dark and the light, and keeping them separate. And at the end, you soften a little bit. And there's some other things going on in here. He's glazed some colors in here, but what makes it work is that pattern of dark clouds against the lighter warmer sky and it's you know you want to simplify everything there's another painting by him a little bit lighter but it's still although it looks a bit more complicated the, the sky it's still a pale yellow sky with a pale muted blue in the background i think these are just white clouds way in the distance that turn a pale yellow this is the blue sky that turns kind of a grayish blue so that's the background to the clouds then the clouds are this shape, you know, here. And again, how you create that shape really makes a difference. It really sets up composition in this set of clouds, or the shape of cloud here, and then the one up here. And it's, again, simplified, varying the shape so it doesn't look static. And actually, these are clouds too back in here. So. It's that, if, I, if you're going to get these shapes down here and spend most of the time getting the values right, the idea that these clouds are darker than these and this one is darker than that one also. So you have three different values of clouds and um, two values in the sky. So you're looking to see how much you can break it down to simpler shapes. And for practice, it's always better thicker paint. You can be indecisive with thin paint and you get caught up in scrubbing and noodling. But decide on a shape, fill it in, and uh, you just learn more that way. So now eventually you want to be able to use thick and thin paint in a painting. But for practice and exercises, not that everything has to be so thick, you know, it becomes messy, but thick enough that the color has some punch to it, the value has a definite value to it. It's just, I, I think, the best way to, to learn. So, those two paintings. Now, looking at some photographs. Now, this is not a sunset. I do have some sunsets here. But it's the same thing. I've got maybe two values of sky. I've got this dark blue background sky. Then I've got maybe a little bit more of a lighter sky there. And I would probably add a touch more of that same lighter sky here. Then there's maybe a, a third one back in here, you know, breaking up those clouds. So I'm, and I'm looking at that consciously before I start, where are the sky holes going to be? So that I have, in this case, if you want to count this, one, two, three, maybe four have the sky hole in here. So four of them and that they're going to get lighter as they go back. So I might have two or three different values. And then the clouds, I want to break up into just simple dark and light. And I never paint, this is a very busy cloud scene, so I never paint them exactly. There's some things I leave out. I like this shape 
and I like the shape of it, so I wouldn't necessarily change it. Then I want to separate these into maybe two or three or three or four groups of clouds. So I have a definite, these are low flying heavy clouds. So I have two, then I might um, start this one here. I'm kind of redesigning the shape and simplifying it so that this cloud is behind this one. Now technically there's another one here, but I might want to simplify and not have a little tiny one like that. And I could put this one in or take it out. I do like the overlapping. This overlaps that. This one doesn't overlap. Neither does this one. So it would be a good idea then to move this one down and have it overlap that one. The more you can overlap, the better. Then I would probably simplify, put a large shape here and I could you know make that sky right there and then make this sky below here so that's really simplifying it and then each shape I know the sun is coming from the left this is late afternoon so two back Arizona so it's coming from the left so my I want to simplify that cloud or the shadow on the cloud and there's a bunch of little darks and lights in here but that's the light area this is the dark area and I want to keep that separate. So I have a definite dark against light. Same thing here, all dark, and then the light in there. After I get all the clouds blocked in with a simple dark, simple light, then I can come back and add a few of these half tones or darker areas in the light. Maybe a little bit of light in the shadow, but keep them separate for as long as possible. Uh, another good artist to look at for clouds is Edgar Payne. If you Google his name, his Clouds look like heavy rocks floating in the sky. And that's kind of what you want. They have to look real three-dimensional, simplified. And the more you can do that, the better. Here's more of a sunset. And again, you have the background sky is the backdrop for the darker clouds. And the sky goes from a uh, maybe a cerulean in white here back in the background here. Then I might have a little bit of viridian in white here. And then down in here, the sky, because of the sun, the sky just becomes a you know, a bright yellow-orange. And then the clouds are all darker. Again, designing these cloud shapes, I might decide how much of the little uh, goopy clouds are kind of floating around there. I might, again, keep them real solid. I might create a bit more of the lighter sky. But I like these two big shapes right here. Again, one overlapping the other. Then I might break this one up. Yeah, the, the photograph is just a starting place. And I might leave some sky and have a shape there. So that I have sky here and of course here. And I'm creating a bit more sky where I want to. But I've got one, two, three, four shapes of clouds. And again, a simple dark and light at first. Even though there's a lot of little darks and lights everywhere, there's not bright sunlight. I see the shadow pattern here. And I'm just going to force one in there there and a little bit lighter on top and darker on the bottom. So really simplifying. Then after everything's simple, everything's blocked in, you can go ahead and break it up a little bit. But my goal is always to make the clouds look a lot simpler. All these have been cropped, uh, but again, simplifying. The photograph is just a place to start. This one's a bit more evident. It's kind of simplified for you. I see this is one big shape here, and then these shapes in here. And I want to overlap them a bit more than they are, so I might have this floating one overlap a little bit there. And again, down in here at the bottom, it gets very busy. So I might pull this cloud behind this one, maybe pull together three or four of them. Because when you get this small, like I see this one, instead of being a bunch of shapes and clouds, pull them together. I'm knocking down all the smaller shapes and it's just easier to read. Plus, the, the, you can see the clouds are getting smaller as they recede. It doesn't always happen. I mean, sometimes you have a tiny cloud up front and some bigger ones in back. But that shows depth, too, on a flat surface when I can have the bigger ones up front and gradually get smaller ones as they recede. And again, the overlapping helps. And then finding that simplified shadow pattern on each big shape. And I can increase it a bit more if I want to show more of the flat shadow on, on most of these, which you get on these big heavy clouds. 
they get fairly flat on the bottom. Then they will generally, and doesn't always show up in photography, but those flat bottom, uh, when it's re they're real low, and they're big and heavy, and they're close enough to the ground, the sunlight bounces off the ground, and it warms up the shadow a little bit. I'll still block them in a cool muted blue or muted violet, but then I'll get some ochre or orange, uh, roughly the same value, and scrub in a little bit, and it kind of warms up the bottom. It's still cool and dark, but gets a little bit of reflected light. And this one took this with a camera phone, and you see that definite shape of the darker part of the cloud, then kind of the half tone or the lighter dark, and then the highlight of the yellow. And that kind of simplifies the clouds a bit more. It separates the values a little bit more, whereas a real good camera, which I did not use here, would show more of the detail and subtleties. And I don't want to see that in the clouds. I want this type of thing here, that simplified shape. But the sky goes from, uh, you, you can start out lighter blue up here, kind of a light blue, and then gets even lighter down here. And then take an alizarin crimson and scrub in to the bottom and kind of drag it up, painting around the bigger clouds. Don't paint around small clouds, put those on top of the background sky. But I would paint around like this one, and of course this big shape in here. Maybe one or two of these, but I'd put the rest on top. I can also get a paper towel and just wipe out the shape. And some of these shapes I might want to make bigger or pull two or three of them together into a big shape. And I generally stay away from trying to paint the sun. The sun's right there. Uh, I usually put it either behind the trees or down below because you just can't get that effect. It's just too much. And generally, you have to darken everything to make it look brighter. So I tend to stay away from painting the, the sun itself. And same thing here. I create a shape or a cloud that this would be one big cloud right here. And then the shadow pattern would be somewhere in there. And keep it that simple. It really works a lot better that way. Then I have a big shape here and one over here and maybe a couple of small ones down below. So really simplifying. This one you can almost see, I think, some of the reflected color right in here from the ground bouncing up. And that gives more color to the clouds. Now the clouds, I'll talk about the color, but I'm using, on most of the clouds, I'm using a blue-orange combination white and orange for the warm clouds and maybe a touch of blue to mute it slightly and then white and blue with a little bit of orange to mute it for the shadow now you can use violets you can change up the color but that's kind of the basic idea of a, a slightly darker cooler color for the shadow and a lighter warmer for the light areas